basement or under the house. Anyway, we have two units. One serves upstairs, one serves downstairs. This is the downstairs, that's the upstairs. But this guy here, it turns out the blower motor's not coming on. So this one actually has an OEM. Um, so we're gonna test it and see if it works uh, before we change it. We do have the motor. Surprisingly, we actually had it in stock. So um, yeah, and it's all programmed and all that. So this is a, what do you call it? A York Infinity, or Affinity, I don't know, whatever. Their fancy one. So anyway, we're gonna see what's up with this uh, blower motor. So this blower motor is a constant airflow ECM. So we have our communication wiring here. So this tells it what to do. These wires here, this is the high voltage which is applied to it all the time, even when there's no call. So first things first, we wanna make sure there is no call for anything. Okay, so we have a call for fan. Okay, 24 volts, all right. Heating, nothing. Cooling, nothing. So we're receiving a call for uh, fan and it's definitely not running. So let's see if we have high voltage first because it could be a board problem. Thankfully, the filter's on the side so we have full access to it. So I've unplugged the power wire and we are receiving high voltage. So now we wanna make sure it's not the board not sending the actual communication wire or communication signals one way is we can actually test these but I don't have the chart so we're gonna use an ECM tester all right so we're using the Gentech uh, tech inspect basically you want to leave your high voltage plugged into your ECM and then you're gonna plug in your tech expect into the communication and basically this is just a switch so it just turns everything on uh, you need to hook up your two wires to RNC to power it and you'll be able to tell when the green light turns on so when we flip this, the blower should turn on if it functions. And as you can see, it's doing nothing. So I suspect that uh, it's dead. All right. So we need to pull the blower out now. Um, but I just wanted to verify it was dead before I swap it out. Because uh, these things are super expensive. Okay. So we need to pull the blower out. This is totally in the way, so it's got to come out, but it's all PVC glued. Uh, so a little trick you can do is obviously we're going to have to cut it, but then you can use one of these, put it back on. Makes it a lot easier. Um, then you just slip it on, slip it off. If you ever need to make any future repairs, pops right off. You don't have to glue nothing. Um, so we're going to do that. Uh, I know you guys are going to tell me something about this, but uh, I already mentioned it to the client. They don't want to do anything about it, so... You know, it's got plenty of tape on it, <laughs> and then it's attached to track pipe with one, with a, yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that, but, uh, so in order to remove this, we got to get rid of this. We got to take this off. Um, we can probably wiggle it where we don't have to take off the inducer, but sometimes you do. Uh, there's going to be screws all around the edges. This thing pops off. There's actually a door switch right there. Um, I've killed the power at the breaker, which you should do. Uh, once we get this off out of the way, I'll hang it down here out of the way, we'll pull the blower out, take the motor out, and do all that. So, I got my uh, wires out of the way. Got my Milwaukee uh, hacksaw. We're going to go ahead and chop it here, and we'll put a cup in there. That way I can get it off. Um, we, gotta, we got that cut, so we're going to pop this off like that. Um, be careful because all these edges are sharp. Uh, that's why I'm wearing gloves. Uh, I forgot to put them on, of course, so I've already cut myself. But every time I work on these Yorks, they always have sharp edges. So wear gloves because you will cut yourself. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Because for some reason, I've noticed that Yorks, they don't, they have just, they just have a lot of sharp edges. Don't cut yourself. It hurts. Anyway, um, we're gonna get this out of the way. So I've loosened that. I'm gonna take this entire thing, that way it's as low as possible. There's a little bit of goop there. Uh, okay, we got that off. So we can just unplug the harness from the uh, from the motor and then unscrew this, uh, this ground. Then you gotta take off this bar and this bar. The screws are on the top. And then the screws for this are back here. Right back in there, I don't know if you can see them. Uh, yeah, it won't fit if you don't take these off. All right, so we got these screws removed. You see there? See the holes there? Okay, so you can see the, the blower wheel or the blower housing things kind of over it. So I would say take out these screws. Now there are two screws sticking out. 
over this bottom piece. So you're gonna have to try to like move it out because it is behind this. So I need two hands to do this, but basically we're gonna try to just kind of have it. There we go, just like that. There. Now this has got to come off. There's three uh, 516 screws on the top up here. You can see them. They're probably covered in stuff, so we got to get those out. And then this just pops right out. All right, so we got everything out of the way. This bar, just the three screws, it just drops down. Um, of course, there's always tape and crap over it, but yeah. So, oh, and I forgot to show you, the wheel does spin freely. Yeah, but anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take this out. Now, make note, because this, this messed me up a lot. The, the rails, it just sits on top. It doesn't actually slide in. There's a little one on the back, which I'll show you when I pull it out, that slides under. Um, so yeah, don't try to waste your time trying to get it in, in there, because I spent a lot of time trying to do that, and then I realized, oh wait, it goes on top. So <laughs> just to save you some time. Anyway, um, let's get this out. There we go. And it comes out so much easier once you know how to do it. <laughs> the first time I did this was painting the butt. Oh, that's it. Let me go ahead and spin it, make sure it's... Yeah, it's not moving too much. Now, they will move a little bit, but not a lot. Um, so, uh, we're going to go ahead and take the wheel out. Um, yeah, I know, I, I switched back to the backpack. Put in the comments below and let me know if you want me to do a tour on you know, how I organize my, my Vito Tech backpack. Um, yeah, I switched from the MCT to that because I found that my MCT bag was getting too small and I was trying to put too many tools and it just turned into like a mess of tools. It wasn't organized at all. So um, my only complaint is it doesn't fit through roof access hatches. However, what I did is I took the strap off my MCT and stuck it on there. So whenever I have to do that, I can just throw it over my shoulder. Um, and then, you know, it's hold it in front of me. And it's not that much bigger, but it, it, it's so much better because I can fit all my tools in there and everything's organized. Okay, so I've loosened the set screw, but that wheel ain't moving. So here's a little trick. You take your adjustable wrench, right, and you put it on the flat side there. And now you can grab that shaft and you can spin it to break it free. Okay. And see now it moves. So now we gotta take the bolts off the back of the uh, motor mount. All right, now this particular blower mount takes three eight screws, so. Alrighty. Ooh. So anyway, I, I, I got a tripod, so for all you people who get motion sickness, um, I listened to you and got a tripod. Um, I have this attached to me right now, so it's probably still gonna wobble. So try not to get seasick. So there we go. So we yeah, just pull it straight up. Alrighty, oh, that was like super easy. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, get that motor in there. All right, since I got the wheel out, I'm gonna go ahead and clean it. It's a little, it's not terrible. It's a little dusty. Um, see that's what, see right there. That's what happens when you work on a York unit without gloves. All right, got her all nice and clean and dried up. That's all dried up, so we're gonna go ahead and put her back together, get the new motor in there and get it installed and see hopefully this thing works. It's important you know the rotation, so you put this back in the right way. Usually you can tell, um, see the hubs on the opposite side, and these were the screw holes that we used for the motor mount, so that means it goes, that's the correct direction. It's another way of telling uh, if for some reason it doesn't have an arrow. All right, so 5 sixteenths. I don't know what size that is, but we're gonna use the adjustable wrench to hold it. And we can use a drill to make this quicker. Just like that. All right, cool. That was easy. So let's test this motor and see if, it, if it's the motor or the module. Now, I have both, and I'm going to change both. But uh, it's always good to know uh, just how these things work. So basically, you have two parts. Right here is a motor, and this is a three-phase a DC motor and then you have your module which is the computer and the inverter uh, so usually in my experience it's always this but for some reason I've changed just this and then this goes bad and then it takes that out so then I end up having to do it again 
So I would recommend you just change both every time just to save yourself a callback or some, you know, other BS. But anyway, um, to take off this module, you're just going to take these two screws out here. They're super long screws. They go all the way through. Uh, they're going to be a quarter inch, I believe. That's one. That's two. Oops. Pull those out. And there's going to be a plug that's in there, see? And it's just a little Molex. you got to push in a little pin. It pops out, all right? So now if we look at this, we can see in this case, the motor is probably fine. Um, it looks like this thing burnt up. I don't know if you could tell, but it uh, it's dead. Not sure what this thing is. And then you can also see there's a burn mark. So in this case, the module is no good. The motor is probably still fine. So uh, like I said, it's a three-phase motor. So we can ohm out all three, uh, all three legs. And we should be getting exact same ohm reading on all three. So we'll do, we're gonna call red one, blue two, and black three. So we'll go one to two. All right, so we got, I don't know if you can see that, but we got 4.58. All right, go one to three, 4.58. And we'll go two to three. Yeah, so it's about the same. So it's 4.6-ish. So yeah, this motor is probably fine. Um, so yeah, you test this just like you would a three-phase compressor. All three legs should be the same, or at least close to each other. So the motor itself might be fine. Uh, so what's really interesting about these things, too, is uh, we can actually down voltage right and then if we spin it you can see that we're actually producing electricity yeah so well we're probably gonna save this motor for a video on uh, how electricity works so I'm planning on doing some uh, theory physics videos in the future on uh, you know the physics or the science of HVAC um, so let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see. So this is our old one. So I think what happened is this thing just got too close and it touched, it shorted out. Um, now here's the new one. So as you can see here, this one's a little bit different. Um, they actually have it all in this epoxy like stuff to keep everything from shorting. As you can see, nothing's going to be short on itself. Uh, this one is a little different. It does have a little ring to extend the size of it, so it'll fit. And then that's our new motor back there. We'll go ahead and ohm that one out just to show you, you know, how they're both the, just to show, to so we have something to, you know, compare to, to show you that this is actually still good. And the fact that it was producing electricity tells me that it's still good. So, all right, so we'll stick with the same colors. Red is one, blue is two, uh, black is three. So we're going to go one to three. Yeah, 4.59-ish, uh, 1 to 2, same, close, uh, 2 to 3, yep, so as you can see, that old motor is fine, our new motor, our new motor is also fine, but that's how you can test these out if you want to see if it's a module, like, again, we know that the module is bad, but I'm replacing both because in my experience, every time I've just done one, usually the other one will fail and take out the, the new part and then I got to do a warranty. So just to be safe, we're going to change out both. Um, and then for York, or at least this particular model, uh, this needed to be programmed um, for something. Pretty much just, you know, the algorithm of the speeds, the fan speeds or whatnot. Um, but anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and get this put together and we'll go from there All right, so we're gonna connect our module to our motor uh, So first things first, we're gonna need two of these screws that it came with a quarter inch I'm gonna slide them in the holes like so That way we can line it up with our holes. There are actually holes on all four port for like frame parts there, 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 and there. Okay, so now there's a notch here. I don't know if you see that. 
and there's notches in the frame here, so you want to line those up. Uh, we're going to plug in our Molex into this connector here. Make sure it clicks. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and we want to make sure that our wire doesn't get caught up on anything. We'll go ahead and line up our screws and get them started by hand. See, so it's not quite 100% lined up. So we need to adjust it. That's why I didn't screw it, put the screws in all the way. That way we got some wiggle room. The part, the hard part is getting this part into that notch. Because of course they don't quite make them perfect as far as fitting. So almost there, but not quite down. Right, now I'm not going all the way down with the drill. I'm gonna finish it off by hand just to be safe. I don't want to strip or bend anything. Alrighty, so we got her all installed. Uh, give her a nice spin. And I did wipe down the uh, motor mounting bracket because it did was a little dusty. And then before I put this in, we're gonna go ahead and wipe down that cavity just to because we don't want to put a clean blower wheel in a dirty cavity. So that sounds dirty, but yeah. All right, well, that's as clean as she's getting. We'll just go ahead and check our secondary heat exchanger, make sure there's no plugs. Looks clear to me. All right, cool. Well, let's go ahead and put our blower back in there. All righty, so we got her all put back together. Things wired. And then, uh, got that on there. So if I ever have to, you know, remove this, it'd be a lot easier next time. Okay, and before you put those on there, make sure you deburr it and get rid of all those burrs. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and, and turn on the breaker and then see if this thing works. All right, she's running. I got her in uh, low-stage heating right now. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, all righty, so, uh, yeah, so anyway, the unit's working. I had a, uh, I had a helicopter um, creep up on me, so uh, I had to turn off the camera. But anyway, uh, yeah, so the unit's back up and running. Everything's working fine. Uh, so yeah, it would look like it was just that module went bad. But anyway, hopefully this helps you out. So uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and uh, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.